Bigfoot is real and actually related to us humans. Well, I was a skeptic. I did not believe these things existed at all prior to this study. Seriously, look how big it is. <laughs> I don't think it is a human. I think it's a Sasquatch. It also bans publicly funded searches for Pokemon, leprechauns, and even the boogeyman. What if I told you that when a quantum AI was fed 50 years of Bigfoot sightings, it found a disturbing pattern, not in the forests, but in us, the people who report them. For decades, thousands of witnesses across North America have reported encounters with an unknown creature. But this wasn't just about logging sightings on a map. When researchers analyzed the massive BFRO database containing over 4,000 detailed reports, they uncovered something unexpected, patterns that can't be explained away so easily. The data revealed clear hotspots that flare up and then go cold, seasonal migration routes that follow predictable timelines, and a striking correlation with rainy weather. Even more puzzling, the dramatic decline in sightings since 2010, despite more people having cameras than ever before. Stay with us, because in the next few minutes, you'll see how the data predicts the next Bigfoot hotspot. And it's not where you'd expect. And before we reveal that, ask yourself this. If so many reports can't be explained by bears or mistakes, what's left? The answer might challenge everything you thought you knew about this enduring mystery. The groundbreaking discoveries? The team didn't just map sightings. They took a revolutionary approach by layering multiple data sets on top of the Bigfoot reports. What emerged was startling. First, they discovered that missing persons cases in national parks cluster in some of the same counties where Bigfoot reports spike. This doesn't prove a connection, but the statistical overlap raised eyebrows among researchers analyzing the data. Even more compelling, years with major wildfires in California directly correlate with sudden bursts of sightings in adjacent regions. Is this simply displaced wildlife being misidentified? Or is something else being forced to move? Perhaps most unexpectedly, when researchers overlaid FAA radar anomaly logs from the Cascades region, they found these unexplained aerial phenomena sometimes lined up with waves of Bigfoot sightings below. When we first laid these layers together, I thought, no way. But the data kept flagging the same coordinates. You have missing people here, Bigfoot reports here, and even restricted military airspace overlapping on the same square of map. Coincidence? Maybe but it feels like something bigger is happening. The patterns become even more intriguing when you look at the timing. The analysis revealed that Bigfoot sightings aren't random. They follow distinct seasonal patterns, with northern sightings peaking in summer and southern sightings in winter. This suggests what researchers call a migration hypothesis, the possibility that whatever people are seeing moves with the seasons. And the AI didn't stop there. It actually predicted where the next sightings are most likely to appear based on all these overlapping factors. If you're already hooked, hit subscribe because this next part could make you rethink what you thought you knew about Bigfoot. What the data reveals about weather patterns and sighting frequencies defies simple explanation. It be happening, researchers ask the AI to create a behavioral simulation. The system modeled a hypothetical population of 2,000 Bigfoots migrating north in summer and south in winter, following food availability and milder climates. The results were astonishing. This migration model matched decades of actual sighting reports with uncanny accuracy. When plotted on a timeline, the AI's predicted movement patterns aligned almost perfectly with when and where people reported encounters over the past 50 years. But the most compelling experiment came next. Researchers knew black bears could explain many sightings. After all, scientists have documented that Bigfoot reports increase by about 4% for every 1,000 black bears in an area. So they decided to filter out this noise. The AI removed all sightings in heavy black bear zones from the data set. Logic suggests this should have eliminated most reports. But what remained was fascinating a smaller yet significant set of sightings in unexpected places like the Hudson Valley, parts of New England, and around Lake Tahoe. This became what researchers call the residual anomaly zone, places where Bigfoot reports persist despite minimal bear populations. Think about it like this. If you remove all the noise, all the sightings that could be explained by bears, you still get this leftover cluster. The AI calls it a residual anomaly. 
And honestly, that's the data that keeps me awake at night. Even more puzzling is the timing. The analysis revealed that many of these residual sightings happen during rainy weather. The median precipitation probability during summer Bigfoot encounters was 100%, with spring sightings showing a 92% chance of rain. This weather correlation defies simple explanation. So, what does this mean? The disturbing part is that these anomalies happen in regions where Bigfoot shouldn't even exist, areas without the typical habitat or food sources that would support a large primate. Yet the reports continue, described with remarkable consistency across decades and locations. When you look at the data this way, the mystery deepens rather than resolves. These patterns suggest either an extraordinary animal adaptation we don't understand, or something about human perception that science hasn't fully explained. Unexpected clues. Beyond tracking locations and timing, researchers explored other types of evidence that might validate the patterns. Their findings in bioacoustics were particularly compelling. The team trained AI on extensive wildlife sound libraries to identify known animal calls. When they fed in recordings collected by Bigfoot researchers over decades, something unexpected emerged. The system detected an unclassified howl signature that appeared across different regions, sometimes decades apart. Most intriguing was that this same acoustic fingerprint appeared in recordings from Washington State in the 1990s and then again in Appalachia in the 2010s. These weren't identical recordings. They were captured by different people using different equipment, yet the AI identified the same sound pattern that doesn't match any known North American wildlife. Satellite imagery analysis yielded another layer of evidence. Using Landsat data, researchers identified areas of vegetation stress in forests where clusters of sightings occurred. These appeared as clearings or trampled areas too large to be created by deer and in patterns inconsistent with normal wildlife movement. During the Lake Tahoe sighting spike of the mid-2000s, the AI flagged multiple unusual clearings visible on satellite imagery within the same time frame as the reports. These clearings appeared suddenly and then gradually filled in over subsequent years. I've walked through those woods myself. You expect deer trails, maybe bear prints, but these clearings, they're circular, precise, and far too wide. The AI saw them from space before anyone noticed on the ground. The environmental DNA, eDNA findings add another puzzling piece. When researchers collected soil samples from purported Bigfoot hotspots between 2019 and 2021, genomics analysis detected DNA sequences related to the pan troglodyte chimpanzee genus, which is not native to North America. Finding primate DNA in rural Kentucky raises questions that are difficult to dismiss. But even if we treat those as coincidences, what the AI found in eyewitness descriptions is harder to dismiss. When analyzing the language patterns across thousands of reports spanning five decades, the consistency is remarkable. Witnesses from different eras and locations describe nearly identical features. Seven to eight foot height, broad shoulders, no visible neck, conical head, and a distinctive musky odor. This level of consistency across witnesses who had no contact with each other challenges simple explanations. Are all these people fabricating the same creature independently? Or are they all experiencing something real that science has yet to explain? Human testimony patterns. The AI's natural language analysis of eyewitness accounts revealed patterns that researchers found both fascinating and perplexing. When examining 50 years of Class A reports, those with clear sightings under good conditions, the AI discovered remarkable consistency. Over 80% of these high credibility reports describe a creature standing at least seven feet tall with broad shoulders, no visible neck, a conical head, and emitting a foul, musky odor. What's striking is how these same specific descriptors appear across isolated communities with little connection to each other. Even before the internet age, witnesses from remote areas of Washington State, rural Appalachia, and the swamps of Florida described nearly identical features. This consistency existed when information didn't travel quickly between regions, long before social media could spread a standardized image. 
The psychological dimensions add another layer of complexity. The AI clearly identified instances where sighting clusters flared up after local news coverage, proving that social contagion plays a role in some cases. When a high-profile sighting makes local headlines, more reports typically follow in that same area. But the disturbing aspect is the consistency that existed before widespread media coverage. The AI noted that even in the 1970s, when information moved slowly and many rural communities had limited external influence, the descriptions remained remarkably similar. This suggests either a shared psychological archetype embedded in human consciousness, something that makes us all see the same creature when startled in the woods, or alternatively, that people across North America have encountered the same biological entity for decades. The decline in sightings since 2010 adds another wrinkle. Despite more people having cameras than ever before, reported encounters have dropped significantly. Does this mean whatever was out there has diminished? Or have we simply stopped looking? So here's the question. Is this just the human brain filling in the same monster template? Or is it proof of something real? Drop your thoughts in the comments before we show you the physical evidence that keeps this mystery alive despite scientific skepticism. When we examine the physical evidence next, you'll see why this debate continues to intrigue both believers and skeptics alike. Physical Evidence and DNA Hints While eyewitness testimony provides compelling patterns, physical evidence adds a crucial dimension to the mystery. Among the most significant findings are the footprint casts collected over decades that display a consistent anatomical feature called a mid-tarsal break. This mid-foot flexion appears in numerous cast impressions from diverse locations and time frames. What makes this significant is that humans don't possess this feature. Our feet have rigid arches that don't bend this way. However, non-human primates like chimpanzees and gorillas do show this mid-tarsal flexibility in their foot structure. Footprint experts who've analyzed these casts note that the pressure ridges and soil displacement patterns indicate something genuinely heavy made these impressions. Not easily explained as hoaxes or misidentified bear tracks. The consistency of this anatomical feature across hundreds of casts from different regions raises questions that challenge simple dismissal. Even more intriguing are the recent environmental DNA findings. Between 2019 and 2021, researchers collected soil samples from purported Bigfoot hotspots, including what appeared to be large nest structures found in Appalachia. When analyzed in genomics labs, these samples yielded unexpected results. The soil contained DNA sequences related to the pan troglodyte, chimpanzee genus, which is not native to North America. Finding this type of primate DNA in rural Kentucky is as puzzling as the Bigfoot phenomenon itself. To be clear, these findings require careful interpretation. Environmental DNA analysis can sometimes detect contamination or lab errors. The samples don't prove a literal chimp was present, but they do indicate some form of primate DNA was detected besides human genetic material. I've seen the cast myself. The midfoot flexion is not human. Combine that with primate DNA in North America, we're left with a disturbing possibility. Either something unknown walked there, or our understanding of what's in these woods is incomplete. What makes these physical traces compelling is how they align with the consistent witness descriptions. The footprints match the reported size and gait of the creature. The DNA hints at primate presence where none should exist and the clearings visible in satellite imagery correspond to areas where sightings cluster. When viewed collectively alongside the AI's pattern analysis, these physical clues prevent scientists from completely closing the book on this enduring mystery. While each piece of evidence has possible conventional explanations, the consistent patterns across multiple lines of evidence continue to raise questions that resist simple answers. To understand the full context of these AI-analyzed patterns, we need to briefly look at the known history of the Bigfoot phenomenon as it's evolved over decades. The modern era of Bigfoot interest began with the famous Patterson-Gimlin film of 1967. This 59-second clip, captured in Northern California, shows what appears to be a large, hair-covered, bipedal figure walking along a creek bed. Despite decades of analysis, the film remains neither conclusively debunked nor authenticated. 
This footage catapulted Bigfoot into mainstream awareness and sparked the first major wave of interest. The late 1970s saw a surge in reported sightings as the creature entered popular culture through documentaries, news specials, and even children's programming. To track these encounters, the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, BFRO, established a comprehensive database categorizing reports by credibility. Class A reports describe clear sightings under good conditions. Class B covers sightings at a distance or in poor lighting. Class C includes secondhand accounts or those with limited details. This classification system has helped researchers separate potential misidentifications from more compelling accounts. The database now contains over 4,000 reports dating back to the 1920s, providing the foundation for the AI analysis we've discussed. The second major wave of interest came in the early 2000s with the rise of the internet and reality television. Shows like Finding Bigfoot and countless YouTube channels renewed public fascination. This period from 2000 to 2010 saw the largest increase in reported sightings on record. But then something unexpected happened. Despite more people than ever having cameras in their pockets, reported encounters began dropping sharply around 2010. This decline continues today, creating a puzzling trend that the AI identified as statistically significant. Some researchers suggest this decline reflects growing public skepticism in an age where high quality photos should be obtainable. Others wonder if whatever people were encountering has actually changed its behavior or diminished in population. Another factor may be reporting changes. In the pre-internet era, someone with a strange encounter might eagerly contact a Bigfoot research group. Today, they might simply post briefly on social media rather than filing an official report. So, whether it's folklore, bears, or something more, the AI forces us to face the same uncomfortable truth. The patterns in the data don't fully align with any single explanation. The bear correlation is strong, but doesn't explain everything. The social contagion effect is real, but doesn't account for the consistency across isolated witnesses. The geographic and seasonal patterns suggest something is moving across the landscape, whether it's imagination or an undocumented species. The quantum AI analysis didn't prove Bigfoot exists, but it revealed something even more unsettling. The patterns don't go away. They keep pointing us back to the same forests, the same anomalies, and the same unanswered questions. When we strip away the sensationalism and examine just the data, we're left with a phenomenon that refuses to be neatly categorized. The correlation with bear populations explains many sightings, but not the residual clusters in areas with few bears. The social contagion effect accounts for some report waves, but not the consistent descriptions from isolated witnesses decades apart. The seasonal migration patterns, the weather correlations, the bioacoustic anomalies, and the physical evidence all form a web of interconnected data points that neither fully confirm nor completely debunk the mystery. Perhaps most profound is what this teaches us about ourselves. Humans are pattern-seeking creatures, yet we're also prone to filling gaps in our knowledge with explanations that make sense to us. The AI shows us both our tendency toward folklore and our genuine encounters with the unexplained. For every hiker who vanishes without explanation, for every clearing in the woods that satellites can't account for. These patterns remind us how much mystery still hides in our own backyard. North America's vast wilderness contains secrets that even our most advanced technology has yet to fully unravel. The disturbing truth might not be that Bigfoot exists or doesn't exist. The truly unsettling revelation is that, after 50 years of sightings and with quantum computing analysis, we still can't definitively answer what thousands of people have reported seeing. Whatever the truth behind these encounters, it continues to elude our best efforts to capture it. If you want us to keep digging into these mysteries with AI and hard data, hit subscribe, because the next story might be even more disturbing. The unexplained is all around us, hiding in plain sight, just waiting for the right technology to bring it into focus.